Welcome to the very prestigious Ragamuffin Awards 2021. The second annual Ragamuffin Awards. And we are your hosts. I'm Alex. I'm James. And I'm Dan. Today we're going to be talking through our favourite songs, videos, gigs, albums and artists of the year. Starting with the first category. Song of the Year. Uh, so, Song of the Year. I'm going to drop some honourable mentions because... There's been so many fantastic songs throughout this year. Uh, Beartooth Dominate, Architects, Meteor, Veil of Maya, Viscera, Spirit Box, Circle With Me, Chapel Town, Rag by Slipknot, Vanilla Pace, Tala, Blood Youth, Iron, y- Iron Lung, Sleep Token, Alkaline, Dying Wish, Fragments of a Bit of Memory, and Obsolete by Of Mice and Men. Absolute fucking tunes. However, in third place, Slaughter to Prevail with Baba Yaga. Second place, you're All You Need by While She Sleeps. And first place as my song of the year. I think there may be a theme coming here. Afterlife by Holding Absence. Cool, what a tune. Fair play. Absolute banger. Dan? I'm, I'm going to go straight in. Um, third place, Comfort, Nervous by While She Sleeps. I think it's one of the, the biggest songs they've, they've done ever. And it's very good. <laughs> Not as good as... Afterlife by Holding Absence, which gets second spot. Um, I don't think I could not give the first slot to my most listened to song of the year. It's Alkaline by Sleep Token. Massive tune. Absolute tune. My honourable mentions are pretty much uh, anything from the top 20 songs graphics that are on our Instagram account. Uh, My top three start with uh, number three, Circle With Me by Spirit Box. Uh, was just massive uh, While She Sleeps Nervous I think is their most important song they've ever made and I can't wait to hear it live again but number one James you can attest to how much I listen to this song yeah. Afterlife Holding Absence just bang in tune I guess that means collectively that the Ragamuffin Award for best song goes to Holding Absence Video of the Year Dan, give us your three. So number three, I, I don't watch many music videos these days, but Don Broco always produced some good music videos. And number three goes to Bruce Willis. It's just, they've green screened themselves into various Bruce Willis films, and it's just really funny. Um, especially the Sixth Sense one. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> uh, number two, Fall For Me by Sleep Token. Um, that's an interesting choice. I, I, I yeah, I I really like the way I, I got really addicted to just watching the video and the way that the video really complements the song, like with the the words coming up on the screen as well. The way that apparently it is Vessel in the video, the way that he's like running towards the sea in a panic while all these words come across the screen. I think the whole thing just creates so many different emotions and feelings, um, and. I felt like I had to have a different choice in there compared to Don Broco, funny, long. <laughs> and that's because number one is also Don Broco with Endorphins. It's Power Rangers. The, the special effects on it are actually pretty cool. Um, loads of explosions, front flips, fight scenes. I just loved it. I think uh, Don Broco have produced, like, if there's one band that have had the best collection of videos for a year, it's been there. So at number three, I've got Don Broco with Endorphins. Just because it's ridiculous. And also, shout out to the Beckham guy. <laughs> He's probably been through hell this year. Raking it in, though. Yeah. Number two, I've got Nervous by Sleeps. Um, I just thought it was such a visually striking video. Um, especially just the scenes of them in front of, in front of the massive screens. It's also quite clever how Simon Neal was not there, and yeah. yet appears to be. It feel, yeah, the first time I watched it, it wasn't actually until I watched the making of... Um, yeah. that I realised that he wasn't actually there um, but number one slot to prevail Baba Yaga because <laughs> it's just amazing it's got a real bear in it what, um, what more could you want <laughs> I remember first watching that video and thinking there's no way that's a real bear and then okay, behind, behind, the, behind scenes. the scenes oh yeah there's a bear just Alex terrible yeah. wrestling a bear uh, so for me number three I went with Alkaline I think it's just beautifully cinematic it's an excellent song Cool effects, cinematography is just gorgeous. I think 
they have a way that they just keep you engaged in the music videos that is unlike many bands that you're just captivated by watching them as well as listening to them uh number two i went baba yaga as well it's just fucking cool and it's the most stereotypical russian thing i think i've ever seen and then number one i went with the love you want i think the way the storyline goes throughout it and like you see the endless cycle coming through Again, it just adds another layer to their music and just absolutely, absolutely love it. They use the colours, I think, in that video as well, in particular. The reds in contrast to the white, like, ribbons that he gets every time he kind of awakens. I think it's very visually stunning. So, that was my number one video. Video of the year, Baba Yaga. Gig of the year. God, we went to a lot this year. It's amazing how much we've managed to fit in. I counted the other day, I've been to 13, including wow. Slam Dunk Festival and the Heavy Music Awards. And that's just in September. That's yeah, right. it's in four months. Uh, at the number three spot, I've got Bring Me The Horizon at the Utility Arena in Birmingham. Popped into my head about 10 minutes before we started recording, and I just had a lot of fun. And the set list was bloody good as well. Number two, I've got Don Broco in Oxford was just energy from start to finish and it was a similar sort of thing to what you said about Shikari in the last episode of our podcast about seeing a band in a room that's a little bit too small for them just mm -hmm. it's a little bit surreal sometimes and it was just so much fun but number one while she sleeps at the underworld the sweatiest show of my life but just perfect it, yeah great venue perfect support and then sleeps just absolutely killed it so so my honourable mention goes to Slam Dunk Festival. I'm trying to not include it as part of the gig because I think that we had such a big group of us that went. It was the return back from COVID and it was just such a great day. So that's just by the side of it. But for number three, I've got Architects at O2 Academy Oxford. Seeing them in that smaller venue that I didn't think they were going to play and two weeks beforehand finding out that it was actually happening. Um, the set list was fantastic and they absolutely killed it. And just kind of re my love for Architects right to the forefront of my music listens. Uh, number two, Sleep Token at O2 Institute Birmingham. I think just an incredible atmosphere, an incredible show, an incredible set. And after we kind of had the teaser from the Heavy Music Awards, seeing them have their own headline show was just something so incredible and just absolutely fantastic and it's really stuck in my memory. And then number one, I echo you, Alex, with that while she sleeps. Underworld, small gigs are fucking amazing. Seeing While She Sleeps in that very, very small arena, not arena, that very, very small venue, um, it was just amazing. And what a way to kind of bring back gigs because that was one of the first things we came back to as like a headline show. Incredible. One that so nearly made it into my top three for me was Idols at the O2 Academy Oxford. Um, they didn't have a support band, but it was just such a fun show. Um, so much energy. Um, band members in the crowd, just a little karaoke session midway through as well. They they were having fun, and the crowd were having fun as well, so that gets an honourable mention. Number three, just pipping idols to the top three, is Bring Me The Horizon in Birmingham. It's the best headline show I've seen them do, um, and quite rightly they're now going to be headlining Reading and Leeds next year fully yes. deserved the, the visuals as well were just amazing um, number two is potentially some recency bias in this but Enter Shikari at O2 Academy Bristol um, like I've said many times before seeing a big band in a venue that's probably too small for them is just the best being so close to, to one of your favourite bands and the set list they had for that tour was amazing as well a mix of old and new they had like one stint that went from about six songs, Arguing with Thermometers, Rabble Rouser, Sorry You're Not a Winner, Gandhi Make Gandhi, Mothership, Solidarity, with no break, huge energy songs, absolutely loved it. But Pippin' Them to the Top Spot, another big band in a small venue, It's While She Sleeps at Camden Underworld, for, for reasons that have already been mentioned. It was just so sweaty, so much fun. Unanimous gig of the year. It's a unanimous decision. I gig of the year. I put it as probably one of the best gigs I've ever been to, full stop, I think. Gig of the life. Yes. <laughs> gig of the year, while she sleeps at the Underworld in Camden. Album of the year. There has been some absolutely incredible bangers this year. And this, I think, was my hardest category. 
because I kind of made a playlist to start off with and then it was obviously hours and hours long because albums just kept getting added. Some came out of the blue, like Blood Youth, that I hadn't really thought about. Architects I'd kind of forgotten about by the beginning of the year. Sleep Token of Mice and Men, Dying Wish. But I managed to nail it down. And with number three, we've got Costalon by Slaughter to Prevail. I think what they did for Deathcore this year was absolutely fantastic and kind of a slight revival earlier on, wasn't it? And they just captured everyone instantly. Uh, number two is While She Sleeps with Sleep Society. Easily, based on my Spotify wrapped, it is probably some of the music I've listened to the most ever. And I absolutely love it. But number one is Holding Absence with The Greatest Mistake of My Life. I think just some of the run of songs that you have in there going back to back to back, especially from like Celebration Song to Beyond Belief, is just incredible. And it's just tune it's after tune. Beyond belief, it's it? beyond belief that it's this good. Um, but it is. I absolutely love this album. And what's surprising is that I hadn't listened to it as much as the year had gone on. But since then, we also saw them at Oxford. It's become probably one of my top album listens ever since in the past two months. And I absolutely love it. So Holding Absence, Greatest Mistake of My Life is my album of the year. So my number three is perhaps a bit of an outsider for this one, one that might have been forgotten about a little. Um, it's from earlier in the year. It's Loss by Devil Sold His Soul. Great album. I, I thought it was perfect. It's a great comeback from them. And it's just spot on throughout. They've not put a foot, foot wrong through the whole thing. Um, number two is... The Greatest Mistake of My Life by Holding Absence. James has talked about that, so I'll go straight to my number one. There's no doubt for this top spot, Sleep Token, This Place Will Become Your Tomb. I've just been obsessed with it since it came out. I've barely stopped listening to it. And for that reason, I don't think I can look past it for number one. Uh, I had a lot that I had to try and filter out of this. Uh, Dying Wish, Sleeps, Slaughter to Prevail were some of the big ones that were circling the, the oh, top three. Th there were so many albums this year that could have, any of the year could have been in that top three. Number three for me was one that was released quite a while back, but I didn't get into it until late in the year, and that's Glow On by Turnstile. Just too much fun. Like I just found myself, especially this month when we've been supposed to be listening to what we review, just listening to this instead, like almost subconsciously just opening Spotify and like just going straight to it time after time number two is Holding Absence The Greatest Mistake of My Life I mean what more can I say that has already been said and I think we summed it up really well in our review at the start of the year like they just built such a cinematic soundscape with what they were doing that you just got lost in it but number one Sleep Token This Place Will, be, will Become Your Tomb just, I just I just remember listening to it on release night at like midnight. Just feeling like I was floating on water listening to Atlantic. It was just the whole album just had such a provoked such a strong like emotion and response in me that yeah, undeniably as a whole piece, just the best album of the year I think. Album of the year, Sleep Token. This place will become your tomb. Artist of the Year. This was a tough one for me because for me, for an artist to be Artist of the Year, they have to have released some good music. They have to have perhaps done some tours, played some shows, and maybe done something that excels and makes them different to other bands. So number three, I've gone for Architects. They've released a very good album this year. They've done some shows, although I haven't been lucky enough to go to any. Um, and they've done loads of different new stuff. They've done this orchestral live stream. They've done loads of different things around like playing smaller venues, loads of different types of tours, different types of shows. So they get number three for me. Also, I think like, sorry to interrupt, but when you hear the word Abbey Road Studios, like yeah. the connotations that has feel so big that a band like Architects being there with an orchestra is huge. So great pick. <laughs> number two sleep token I don't think you can you can release my album of the year an album of the year and not get into my top three I think um, they've not done much more other than play just lots of really really good shows 
and released some really really good music I've fallen in love with the whole atmosphere and the whole lore they create as well which they they've continued perfectly with with everything all their social media activity everything they do just sticks perfectly to this storyline um so they get number two number one for uh, um, my artist of the year i've put them in this spot because we've seen them twice they've played a great show every time they've been absolutely every year, everywhere this year every festival every tour they seem to be on and for their just seemingly love the industry they're in and the support that they have for their peers for other bands other artists and, and anyone in the media around them as well it's holding absence great pick a um, couple of honourable mentions Turnstile for what they've done for hardcore music uh, Sleeps great album one of the best live bands that I've ever seen and the Sleep Society continues to I think be a really important thing that they are doing in the community and uh and in the industry as well and slot to prevail for just being just being, being amazing yeah but number three i've got spirit box um i think you'd be hard pressed to find a band that's been more talked about this year everyone's had their eyes on them from the first singles all the way through to the album which has appeared in a lot of publications uh, end of year lists very high up and i think when they start playing live even more um and hopefully tour the UK next year, it's going to push them even higher. But Spirit Box number three. Number two, Sleep Token. I mean, the album was mesmerising, as we've said, and seeing them live twice, just their command of the crowd, especially at the Heavy Music Awards, which wasn't wasn't even a headline show. It was like a, just it was like being at a ritualistic experience. But number one, I echo everything that Dan said. Great album, great singles, they seem like the loveliest boys. They're amazing live. Live? <laughs> They're amazing live. Are you choking up? <laughs> it's holding absence. The bloody boys. So for me, number three, I went with Sleep Token. I think album, visually, the gigs we've been to, everything is just incredible. They can't really put a foot wrong and they've done some incredible things this year. Uh, number two, for pretty much the reasons you mentioned for me, it was Sleeps. I feel like the headline set on their like really small intimate show was incredible. Their set that I saw at Slam Dunk that you two didn't was fantastic and they absolutely killed it in the Jägermeister 10. And I think they're getting to a point where hopefully some of these like smaller festivals like a Slam Dunk, like a Trees, they should be getting close to that headline spot now. And I think they deserve it. Like you said with the Patreon, they're still pushing their way forward with that. And I think there's still great things to come out of it. So that's why they're number two. And I think when you have a band as your number one album and your number one song, how can you not pick them as your number one artist? I think Holding Absence have absolutely captured 2021. They've come out of the pandemic uh, just stronger than ever. They have been making all the noise and all these tours. They've just kept going and kept going. Incredible album. They're still on tour right They're now. Still, they've gone back on tour and again, um, I think with Creeper now. Just absolutely fantastic. They they haven't put a foot wrong at all this year and they've just gone from strength to strength to strength. Such nice guys, such incredible music. So I guess the Ragamuffin Award for Artist of the Year also then goes to Holding Absence. Hello, boys. And consider this an open invitation to come on the podcast whenever you like. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Well, 2021, it's been eventful. We managed to get back to gigs after COVID. There's been... A lot of incredible music come out. Um, we've tried to wrap it up, I guess, in this little short time. I look forward to next year. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave a comment with who wins all of your awards. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, why not tweet us at Ragamuffin Pod or leave a hateful comment on Instagram at Ragamuffin Music Podcast. That'd be funny. Most hateful comment will be an award next year. Yeah, go on. And also, I think it goes without saying that podcast of the year goes to us. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well done, boys. We've done well this it's year. It's been an absolute pleasure. And to think we started this year over Discord. And here we are. Here we are. A year later. We started this year in our own bedrooms, and now here we are in Alex's. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone that's listened so far. Um, we appreciate anyone that's enjoyed the videos, left likes, anyone that's subscribed. And we look forward to interacting with you all in 2022.
Bye. <laughs> That wasn't meant to be. Turned out that way.